time doesn't permit me to do that. But we're grateful to God for the privilege that is afforded to me. I'd like to direct our attention this morning uh, to the first chapter of Mark's Gospel. Um, uh, beginning at the 21st verse uh, of, that, of that chapter and, and read a few verses. Uh, an expository conference can bear a few verses as a... And so uh, I'd like us to look at verses 21 to 39. And they went into Capernaum, and immediately on the Sabbath he entered the synagogue and taught. And they were astonished at his teaching, for he taught them as one who had authority and not as the scribes. And immediately there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit. And he cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent and come out of him. And the unclean spirit, convulsing him and crying with a loud voice, came out of him. And they were all amazed, so that they questioned among themselves, saying, What is this, a new teaching? With authority he commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. And at once his fame spread everywhere throughout all the surrounding region of Galilee. And immediately he left the synagogue and entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Now Simon's mother-in-law lay sick with a fever. And immediately they told him of her. And he came and took her by the hand and lifted her up. And the fever left her. And she served them. That evening at sundown, they brought to him all who were sick or possessed with demons. The whole city was gathered together about the door. And he healed many who were sick with various diseases and cast out many demons. And he would not permit the demons to speak because they knew him. And in the morning, a great while before day, he rose and went out to a lonely place. And there he prayed. And Simon and those who were with him pursued him. And they found him and said to him, everyone is searching for you. And he said to them, let us go on to the next towns that I may preach there also. For well, that is why I came out. And he went throughout all Galilee, preaching in their synagogues and casting out demons. A day's dealing with disabilities. One day with him in this text allows us to appreciate so much that might be meaningful for us even in our own ministers a day's dealing with disabilities is made evident in this incident of this text for it takes place on a particular sabbath day the morning of which jesus entered a synagogue in the community of capernaum this little nondescript village of northern Palestine seems to have become noteworthy by virtue of Jesus' ministry. Apart from his activities in the region, there is no mention of Capernaum in all the biblical recollections. This scriptural scenario begins, says verse 21, when Jesus enters the synagogue on that morning. The text helps us appreciate the fact that he enters the synagogue and there is confronted with a demon-possessed man. Now this demon-possessed man was in the synagogue apparently when Jesus got there. He was 
who was apparently it it appears that demons are undeterred by temple proceedings and so this man is there he was there the day before Jesus arrived he was there the week before Jesus arrived he was there last Sunday before Jesus got there he was there he was there this this demon possessed man apparently the temple cult had not eradicated his demonic possession the temple proceedings had not deterred his demon possession it appears that only the presence of the divine in person can deal with the demonic and there is no disturbance until Jesus comes and when, when he gets there, on that morning when Jesus shows up, then the demonic is disturbed. He's bothered by the presence of the divine. Not the ritual of the temple, but the presence of the divine. It is, it is that presence on that morning that disturbs the demonic. It is because he has come in contact with the divine in person that he seems disturbed and makes this avowal. What have you to do with us? We know who you are. And Jesus rebukes him and requires that the demonic be dealt with by a direct confrontation. And so, on the morning of this day in which he deals with disabilities, he is confronted with this demonic presence. On that morning, in that place, in that temple, we are given to understand how forceful divine presence is. We are given to appreciate the fact that the divine deals with disabilities early in the day. And then, and then, says this text, he leaves that place. Mark has a peculiar way of moving us along in his narrative. And immediately, he says, and immediately later. It's a stylistic way Mark has of moving us forward. Suffice it to say that the transition for us is that he moves from the temple now to Simon's mother-in-law's house. There is further disability that day. In Simon's mother-in-law's house, they introduce him to one who has the fever. And they acquaint him with her condition. And he extends his hand to her. Unlike this vociferous encounter he has had, in the temple. This time he merely extends his hand to her and raises her from her sick bed. He has had to speak harshly to the demonic a moment ago, but this other disability requires a different approach now. He just he just extends his hand to her. You, there, there, there are as some of the youngsters say on our campus back in Virginia Union, there are different strokes for different folks, they said. They, you don't do what you do for the demonic that way when you get inside the house. There are, it's disability, but made manifest in a different way. He deals with disabilities differently. And so the, the, the marvelous unfolding of the text helps us appreciate the fact that the divine understands what we need and how we need it. For some, it is one thing. For others, it is something else. But disability, nevertheless. And so he extends his hand to her. The realization now is beyond the authoritative display made evident in public just a little while ago in the morning. Now there is this private display of raising her.
and he carries with him into that private arena those who can go with him inside and share his ministry inside closed quarters. There are those who are participants in his public ministry, but there are some who can be with him in the privacy of this kind of raising as well. And so when he gets inside, he raises Peter's mother-in-law. The text is clear as it continues on this day of disability. After he left the synagogue and went in and raised Peter's mother-in-law, says the text, he became extremely popular. He became almost a celebrity. And so that evening at sundown, they brought to him all who were sick or possessed with demons. The whole city, says Mark, a bit of hyperbole perhaps, but he means a whole lot of folk came now. <laughs> by, by evening, a whole lot of folk were gathered. His fame had spread. His name had gone out. And there were some who were waiting because it was a Sabbath day and protocol didn't allow them to come early on. They, they were religious adherents and so protocol prohibited them to come. And so they didn't come till after sundown. But, but they heard about it, though. They heard that he was around. And they heard that he was healing. But protocol prohibited them from coming early. But whatever the prohibition, they, they heard about him. And, and they made their way, says the text. That evening at sundown, they brought to him all who were sick or possessed with demons and the whole city was gathered together that evening and so from the morning in the temple midday in peter's mother-in-law's house and then evening time when he was crowded by many who came demonically possessed but he would not permit the demons to speak because they knew him this, this now is no prohibition such as he has had in the temple. He now prohibits the demonic from declaring his presence. He, 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 the demonic has not said anything bad about him, but he just will not allow himself to be defined by the demonic. He will not allow himself to receive demonic accolades. Well, if, if the demonic can designate you, the demonic can define you, then it can direct you. And, and we have to be careful, we have to be careful, lest the demonic define and declare our existence. They may not say anything bad about you, but, but even what they say that might be good, their declaration is tainted by the demonic's presence. And so, on this day of dealing with disability, he will not allow the demonic to declare even how good he is. The, the, the Reverend Doctor, he wouldn't even let the demonic do that. Be careful. Be careful. Be careful of the accolades we are so willingly accepting. Be careful. They might be demonically inspired. And if, if, if the demonic can designate you, then he can define you. Then you have to live up to his designation, to, to the demonic definition. He will not subject himself to demonic definition. And so, so he will not allow, even in that evening, even with all those folk, he will not allow that to occur. And Mark is clear because he says he would not have permit the demons to speak because they knew him. What an interesting scenario this is as it flows, as it moves, as the transition takes place from morning to noon and on into evening. And then, and then he gets weary. He gets weary. The text helps us appreciate as we move through it that in the morning, a great while before day, he rose and went out to a lonely place. And there he prayed regained his strength that he prayed he's been working all day burdened 
by the cares of those who needed his assistance. He had dealt with a madman in the morning, a mother-in-law midday. It, it's tiresome, man. It's, it's excruciatingly tiresome to have to put yourself into the needs of those to whom he has been ministering. And so he retires. And it says a great while before day, he went out. The pericope continues and helps us appreciate that Simon and those who were with him pursued him. They went looking for him. If, if I can imagine their conversation, they pursued him and said, Jesus, you made a hit in Capernaum all day long. You, they, they had been looking for you. They, they heard about what you had been doing. They've been looking for you all day and all night. Where have you been? Here you are out here in some lonely spot. You can make a hit in Capernaum. Up here, you need not worry about that Jerusalem crowd down south. You can set up shop here in Capernaum. They, they pursued him. They wanted him to come back and bask in his celebrity status. They want him to come back and set up shop in Capernaum. They want him to be there where his friends and followers might have been. Set up a camp here in Capernaum. Everyone is searching for you. And then he says to them what we need to hear. Let us go on to the next towns that I may preach there also. For, for that is why I came out. And he went throughout all Galilee preaching in their synagogues and casting out demons. This, this now is the marvelous indication of his own self-understanding. They have been with him all day. They have followed his ministry through every up and down. And yet they do not find out until the next day what his own self-understanding is. They do not find out until after he has been out there and now he reveals. They do not find out from him until the next morning what it's all about. Let me tell you, he says, why I came out. But they do not find out until the next day. They can't find out even when they follow him. They can only find out by following him all the way through that day, through that night, and then waiting until the next morning before they, even disciples, don't really know what his ministry is until the next morning. That's when he reveals to them what it's all about. That's when they reveal. That's when he reveals to them what the whole matter is for. That's when he tells them that, that there is no effective following of the eternal. There is no effective following of the eternal until you understand that, that, that the nighttime of some previous condition never ends it. It's not ended nor defined in the nighttime of the previous condition. You, you've got to go all the way through with him. You've got to go through ups and downs and through the doubts. And you've got to wait until the next morning before you really find out what he's all about. Now, 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 they didn't know that. Not even disciples know. You got to stay with him a long time. You got to stay with him all day. You got to stay with him a long time through night shot. But, 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 but in the morning, you find out what it's all about. In the morning, he reveals to them what the previous day has been for. In the morning, he lets them know what it has been like all day long. In the morning, he helps them understand the significance of that. Now, now, when you don't stay with him that long, you miss the meaning of his message and ministry because you've got to stay with him. The enemies thought they had him that night. They thought they finished him off that night. They thought it was all over that night. They didn't stay with him long enough. If you stay with him till morning, he reveals the purpose of it all. If you stay with him till morning, he lets you know what it's all for. Oh, Lord, teach us now how to wait with you till the morning shadows come. 
help us understand how fellowship can only be made with you in the morning and then reveal unto us what the next day shall be like. Stay with him. Don't leave. Stay with him. Because in the morning, shadows dark right now. Difficulties come right now. Difficulties on every hand. And we cannot understand all the ways that God would lead us to that blessed promised land. But we follow till we die. And he'll lead us by and by. In the morning. Oh, in the morning. When the morning comes. And all the saints of God are gathered home. Praise his name. Because it's a day's disability. But in the morning, all the disabilities are over. In the morning, God raises those who have been his sons. In the morning, follow him beyond the disabilities. Even disciples need to follow him. If in fact we would be properly informed. Follow the master. Go where he goes. And then let him tell you what it's all about. For after all is said and done, we shall have to meet him in the morning. I can't understand right now what I've been through. And I don't understand why I've been up and down so long. And I can't understand it now. But by and by, one of these mornings, after a while, I shall understand. Even now, I shall know as I have been known. I shall go home at last to understand what God has been about in the morning. In the morning, praise his name and give God the glory. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. In the morning.